Welcome to the VHF UHF channel and uh, I want to talk a little bit and answer a couple of questions that people have been asking me uh, concerning satellites on the VHF UHF range and understanding a little more about what all of it what's all about. First I want to talk about the software I use for satellite tracking. Uh, I use Arbitron. I really like this software. It's one of my favorite it is um, a very, it's an old software that has not been changed since 2005 as you see here but the good news is that it is still functional and works even in Windows 10 one little thing if you use it in Windows 7 Windows 8 or Windows 10 right click on the executable and make sure that you run it as an administrator or else the satellite information will not be updated because it won't be able to write on the hard, on the hard drive if you don't give it administrative purposes. Um, and I'll have a video, I'll, I'll show you guys. Uh, so this is Windows only, by the way. If you're not on Windows, um, uh, I, there's, there's other types of software available. If you're on Linux, for example, you have gproduct, which is very nice. Um, and that you can use on the Linux distro if you're not a Windows guy. Um, one of the other things is, of course, a lot of you are wondering where I get the frequency. So I use an app. If you have an Android phone or if you, even if you have an uh, iPhone, there are satellite tracking software that you can actually go get in the App Store. Uh, I use Evans Above on my Android phone. But the other thing is getting information about which satellites, which amateur satellites are actually operational or not. And I actually use this web page that I'll post the link in the description below the video. This is uh, maintained by a Japanese ham operator, uh, JE9PEL. And it is updated regularly, several times a week, and contains all the information about which satellites are on so you see the complete list of amateur satellites in orbit and you notice that some have a yellow line on them that line is actually telling you which ones are still operational so that's why it's nice to see this list because it's updated all the time by amateur operators so you can see all the ones that are actually online the ones that are actually working and the ones that are actually not working. The other information that it gives you, because you see a lot of frequencies here and you're like, what exactly am I listening to? What frequency should I tune to? At the top of the list, it tells you, uh, so the satellite name, its identification number, then you have uplink, downlink, beacon. These are the three informations that are useful for, depending on what you do. Uplink is useful for amateur radio operators. If you want to work a satellite, knowing what frequencies you have to be on to send to the satellite, that's called the uplink. So this information is in here, what frequency you should be on your ham transceiver if you want to operate a satellite. Downlink is interesting for, of course, amateur operators, but it's also what you want to check out if you're a listener the downlink is where the frequencies or the frequency range where you should listen to some activity some have one frequency for example here for 437.026 some have a range of frequency depending on what type of satellite it is you might need to go into that range so for example here in amateur Oscar 7 the downlink 145.925 to 145.975 that's where the activity is so you should constantly tune around that little range to see if there's some activity the other thing here is beacon beacon is um, a signal that is being sent out by the satellite that is autonomous it's controlled by a computer or it's controlled by the satellite transmitter itself. The beacon is useful for several things. A lot of beacons have information about the satellite and if you go on the 
uh, website of whoever made that satellite, often they have software that you can download and you can actually decode whatever beacon information is in there. And a lot of them are in Morse code, some are in digital modes. And they give all sorts of information on, you know, the satellite's uh, um, voltage of the solar panel, internal temperature, um, status, if it's, you know, working well or if the computer has bugs or problems. Um, but the beacon is also extremely useful, and this is what I use the beacon for, is if you're trying to listen to a satellite, try catching the beacon first. Often the beacon is easier to listen to than a lot of other uh, activity on a satellite. Not counting the fact that, depending on the time of day you're listening to a satellite, there are times when there's no activity. So there are times you might be trying to get some activity from amateur operators and there's nothing there. So you might be wondering, well, maybe I'm not hearing the satellite. That's where the beacon is important because if you hear the beacon, that means you're gonna hear the satellite. You're gonna hear the activity. So the beacon is useful in order to know if you are actually going to listen or hear activity. That's why in some of my videos, you might see me listening to Morse code beacon or all sorts of weird signals and then move on to the frequency range where the activity is usually. Because I know that if I hear that beacon, I will hear the activity of the satellite. That's pretty much for sure. So this is a nice website. Check it out and slowly learn. Remember the yellow lines are where the activity is happening, which satellites are operating. <clears throat> so you don't lose your time trying to listen to a satellite that doesn't operate anymore for example, and have fun. And remember that there are versions. I use the Excel version. At the top, you have a version in Word, Excel, in uh, comma-separated value, and so on, that you can use with different software. I like the uh, satlist.xls uh, in Excel because it actually is easier for me to look at it through uh, the Excel spreadsheet. But if you don't want to download the list at all, just remember that you just go down the page. The list is there on the web on the web page. You can just go there and check out all the different satellites that are operating. So when you know that one is coming, check out if it's active. If it's active, look at the frequencies, look at the beacon frequency, and try to tune it. And try to listen to it. Uh, it's part of the fun, and uh, it's really really cool. And this is probably the best list you can have for the activity and, and, and knowing which satellites are actually still active and working um, so that you don't, like I said, don't lose your time listening to satellites that might be dead for a while. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.